This is part three of our seven part series on the basics of an automatic transmission covering one way clutches. Depending on how this transmission is engineered, a one way clutch is either going to drive a gear set component or it's going to hold a gear set component. And we've got a few different designs of one way clutches. This top one here is a roller clutch. And in a roller clutch, I've got a smooth race, either inner or outer race. Usually the inner race will be smooth. We've got these rollers, as you can see, they look like roller bearings. And then the outer race is going to have these series of ramps. And if this inner race tries to rotate in one direction, like you can see it says free going clockwise, it's going to be allowed to go free because these rollers are going to kind of push up into their little open areas. And if, it tries the, if the inner race tries to rotate the other direction, these rollers are going to get wedged. They're going to roll down into that little wedge and get clamped and not be able to rotate any further. This middle design here is a sprag. We're going to see more on that in an upcoming video here. But these sprag elements are these little figure eight shaped little elements that live between a smooth outer race and a smooth inner race. And with the sprag, on this sprag, you're going to see if I took that outer race and tried to rotate that outer race counterclockwise, those elements might lay flat a little bit and allow that rotation. But if I try to rotate that outer, outer race clockwise, those little elements are going to try to stand up and they're going to get wedged in there. That's basically how a sprag works. They're very common because you can get a lot of elements around that, the circumference of the sprag race. Whereas on the roller design, you have to make room for the ramps and there's these little accordion springs that aren't shown here that live in between the, um, the individual rollers. Now on the bottom here, we have this ratcheting type. And that's what I've got in my hand here. They call it a ratcheting type because as you, as you can hear, it sounds like a freewheel on a bicycle. And looking at the little uh, the, the image that we've got here, you can see the little paws and springs, and they kind of lift up into these little notches that we have. So it is, it's a design that sounds just like a freewheel on a bicycle. It's probably designed very similar. And it's going to allow rotation in one direction, and it's going to lock going in the other direction. As mentioned before, a mechanical clutch can either drive a part of a gear set or hold a part of a gear set. And you can see in this example that I've got above me, this is a 4L60E Sprag, and that Sprag assembly, uh, the forward clutch, which is in my left hand, is driving the outer race of the Sprag assembly, and then through the Sprag elements, I'm going to drive the gear, which is in my right hand. So as I rotate that, you can see that I have the ability of driving that gear when I rotate it clockwise, but when it, I try to rotate it counterclockwise, it can't drive it. So that's the basic premise of a of how those gears work, or how a one-way clutch works. Now it is also worth mentioning that not all transmissions use mechanical clutches. Matter of fact, the very first transmission we're going to go through, because it's basic and simple, is the 41TE. It's got five multiple disc clutch assemblies and no mechanical clutches. But just about every transmission will have a mechanical clutch somewhere in it. So don't be surprised when you take them apart and you come across a mechanical clutch, a one-way clutch of one sort or another. The well, bench is starting to get pretty full here, but let's take a look at some one-way clutches. What a one-way clutch does, it's a mechanical clutch, and it's going to hold the device and prevent it from spinning one direction, but allow it to spin in the other. And we, we use those quite a bit in automatic transmissions. Sometimes, like in this assembly right here, it's in co combination with an input drum. As a matter of fact, this input drum right here, it has that sprag is located in there. It's a one-way clutch. So when one clutch applies, when the forward clutch in this case applies, it delivers torque to this gear set through that one-way clutch. So when you're accelerating, it's always driving that gear, but if you take your foot off the throttle, it lets the gear continue to move, but lets the engine and the input drum slow down. So that's the benefit of that. This is that same one, it's in there, but uh, this is a similar one right here. So you can see I can drive this gear set part. This is where the forward clutch grabs onto these splines. I can drive that part, but if I want to stop driving that part, the gear can continue to move on. So your, the engine could drive it through the input shaft and drive that sun gear, and the engine can stop driving, but the one-way clutch will let the gear continue to spin. It's kind of like a freewheel on your bicycle. When you stop pedaling, you're, you can still keep rolling, but your engine, your part that's driving the wheels, that doesn't have to spin, it just freewheels. This is a sprag right here. If I take it apart and take a look how it's constructed, you could say they've got these kind of, uh, I call them figure eight shaped elements in there. It can go ahead and spin freely right now because these sprag elements kind of lay flat, or they try to at least. 
But then if I go the other way, they try to, they'll actually lift up and kind of uh, grab. So they lay flat in this direction, and then go in the other direction, they bind and kind of uh, wedge themselves in there. That's how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to do that. Another one-way clutch is a roller clutch. And in this case, you can see this is a roller clutch here. It's designed to grab onto this carrier assembly. The way it's set up now, it will allow the carrier assembly to rotate in a clockwise direction as viewed from this side. And it'll prevent it from rotating in the counterclockwise direction. Clockwise, counterclockwise. These parts right on the outside are lugged to the transmission case, so I'm basically allowing my gear to always spin clockwise, but never counterclockwise. And the way this is designed, it's a little different than the Sprag. If I look on the inside, I've got these rollers, they look like roller bearings. So, and they have these little accordion shaped springs here. These springs are like little accordions. And the inner race is smooth, that it rides up against. So if you take a look, the inner race is smooth. Nothing really fancy going on there. But the outer race, the outer race has these ramps. So when a roller wants to go, when a roller wants to go down a ramp, the part's able to spin. So like I'm able to make it spin this direction because the rollers are forced down the ramp. But when the component wants to go the opposite direction, the roller rides up the ramp, it wedges itself. It creates a little wedgy effect there. Another type of one-way clutch is this ratchet type clutch. And you can listen to this and tell why they call it a ratchet. Sounds like you're in Vegas and at the roulette wheel. And in this case, it's designed to grab onto this internal gear carrier assembly. You can see this is off of a 6F50. It allows it to rotate in one direction, but doesn't allow it to rotate in the other direction. The Honda 10 speed has a ratcheting design, and it's designed to grab onto this planetary gear set right here. So this thing's a little different. It's got a lever. This is hydraulically actuated in the transmission. When the lever's down, as I'm showing it here, it allows rotation of this gear set in one direction and not the other. And then when this lever's up, it locks in both directions. You can actually see on the shape of this, the little ramps that the pawls grab onto. And then there's a mechanism that locks them in place so that they just will prevent that gear from ever moving when this is in the up position. This is a one-way clutch, and you can see these splines right here grab into the transmission case. So it's designed to hold this part to the case in one direction or in both directions. So when we talk about these planetary gear sets and we say there's a part that's input, part that's held, and a part that's output, now you get an idea of what's doing the holding and what's doing the driving. We've got these clutch assemblies or these one-way clutches or these bands. They're either going through and in the case of a clutch, they can either hold or drive a part. In the case of a one-way clutch, they can either hold or drive apart. In the case of a band, they're just going to be holding apart.